Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a pleasant Sunday smoke. And on this pleasant Sunday smoke, I am, first of all, smoking Dunhill Elizabethan Mixture. Yes, my favorite daily pipe tobacco. Those of you who follow this channel for any length of time at all will know that's the case, but normally on a Sunday smoke, I'm not smoking that because I've just been reviewing another tobacco. Last week, I posted my review of... Uh, what the hell did I review last week? Peterson, Irish Oak. Check that out if you haven't already. I got a good response from that video. Um, this week I am not reviewing a tobacco. It's usually every other week for pipe tobacco reviews, but I am surrounded by things that I have been reviewing here. I'm rushing through this today, gang, because I have lots to do, but I wanted to check in with you and show you what's been going on. First of all, I have reviewed this, the Everett Burley Leather Pipe Roll. I've recorded this review. This will post this week. Um, it's pretty cool. Check it out. Check out the review. It's something that is not, you know, I got an email from the man who sent me this. He has an Etsy shop and he said that when I just mentioned it on the Sunday Smoke, he had a lot of people asking about it and he didn't have enough for people. So he's trying to sort of ramp that up. Um, so if you see the review and you think it's cool and you want one, you may have to back order it. Um, this isn't, you know, this isn't a big company just churning these out. So bear that in mind, but it's really cool. Check out the review for this. It will be posting this week. I also got a big stack of notebooks from a company called Danique. Got a bunch of notebooks here. It's amazing. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with all these things. I, I'm, I have enough notebooks, I think, to last me for the rest of my life. But these are really cool. These are individually designed well, at least the cover art is designed. They get all sorts of different artists together. Everyone from like a high school student to an established professional artist. And they design covers. And there's all sorts of different designs. Tons on the website. It's a train, everybody. I'm just going to power through this. I don't care. Um, they put the artist designs on the covers of these notebooks. And these are nice, high quality, really heavy paper, good notebooks. Um, you know, these are lay flat, soft colors, blank and lined. This is a sketchbook, spiral bound. And this is what they call the leather sketchbook, but it's a PU leather, like a vegan leather. Um, they put them on the notebooks, they sell them, and then a portion of the proceeds goes to the artist. And then another portion of the proceeds goes to helping to build schools. So they're very nice, young, idealistic people, and it's a good cause. So check out the review for these notebooks coming this week as well. God, let me put this all to the side. Many of you watched my review of this, the Nutsack Satchel Pro, um, and I told you what I thought of the name. Not a huge fan, but I am a very big fan of the actual bag. So you may notice here, there was a label that had a little acorn and the words Nutsack on it. That is now gone. And now I have no problem using this bag on a daily basis. I think it's a great bag. And it's always one of those things when a company sends you a product for review, when they reach out to you, you didn't reach out to them. And so you don't know for sure if this is going to be something that you like. Because often, if I purchase something myself to review on the channel, the chances are pretty good that I'm going to like it because I do research. I'm like, is this good? I read other reviews. I figure out, is this something that I want to spend my hard-earned money on and then show to you? But when a company asks me to review something, I, do, I don't review it unless I think it is something that will appeal to you, the viewer. But then, you know, you never know. You never know what the quality is going to be like. And for something like this, it's always kind of awkward because there have been things that I've just downright disliked. And so you're like, you know, I'm always sending the link of the review to whoever the PR person is. And like, well, there you go. And there's the review. And then they're often sort of miffed if they see a very negative review. And this was even kind of more awkward. Thank you, Train. Because it wasn't a ne negative review. It was a very positive review. But I just had some problems with the name. But I should tell you, the guy Matt that I was dealing with from Nutsack. Oh, sweet Jesus. Shut up. Shut up, Train. Let's take a break. Alright, the train's still going by, but I think he's done blowing his horn for now. Anyway, as I was saying, Matt, the guy who I've been dealing with um, through Nutsack, still have trouble saying that, was actually really grac gracious about the review, and uh, they seem like nice people, so I think you should check out the bags. Like I said, it's a great bag. I love it. 
Um, and if you can't stand the name or the logo, just rip it off like I did. I just used a sharp knife and it took about a minute. And if you're someone who actually sews, you may have a seam ripper or something like that and it'd be even easier. So I have some other things written down that I wanted to get, to, get through really quickly. We have, oh God, this is a really long subject. I don't know if I can get to this, but the Wall Street Journal is basically trying to kill YouTube. It seems they already attacked PewDiePie who love him or hate him. He's the most popular YouTuber. And they just did a completely fake hit piece where they took all these things out of context and tried to make it seem as though he were a Nazi. Um, and now they have gone to the trouble. <sighs> I can't get into all this right now, but basically the way AdSense works on YouTube, advertisers pay to advertise on videos on YouTube, but there are billions of videos on YouTube and it's pretty impossible to check every single one to see what is actually being said on those videos. And the Wall Street Journal went out of their way to find, I think they found five videos, and I'm gonna get a lot of these things wrong probably, but from my understanding, they found five videos that had racist content on them. And then they went to a bunch of advertisers and said, look at this, your ads could end up on videos that have racist content. And so now there's been a large advertiser boycott of YouTube. So the Wall Street Journal, they are a dying breed. They are in print media and they know that they are dying. They know that they are struggling for existence. They know that YouTube is the future. Streaming services are the future. And they are doing everything in their power to F with YouTube. That's the way it seems to me anyway. Um, it's funny because, okay, there's been a lot of problems now, so there's been an advertiser boycott. People are freaking out. They think YouTube might die in terms of monetization and things like that. And I have definitely noticed, you know, even from over a year ago when I first started monetizing my videos, I have more views now, more subscribers now by far than I did then, but I have less income now than I did then, which was never much to begin with, but it's been steadily going down. Um, there's no way that the advertisers can stay away from YouTube for long because television is dying as well, broadcast television. How many of you actually watch commercials on television? Aren't you putting everything on DVR and then just fast forwarding through commercials? I don't even watch television. I don't have broadcast, I don't have cable. Nothing is, nothing is beamed to me via the broadcast. Everything is streaming. Everything, I'd say about 60 to 70% of my entertainment comes from YouTube, and then other things are through Netflix, uh, Amazon Prime, HBO Go, things like that. So that system is dying, and if advertisers want to reach consumers, they have to use YouTube and other streaming services like that. I don't know what the stati statistics are right now, but I think we're already very close to having more people watching YouTube than are watching broadcast television. So. People are freaking out. The Wall Street Journal is trying its best to kill YouTube, to kill streamers, but it's not going to work. The future is here and you guys are in on the ground floor. Um, some other things I wanted to mention really quickly. I had a good response from the last Sunday Smoke where I was sort of frustrated about the homeless situation that's been going on here. Um, and a lot of people's response was just to say, well, move. Why don't you just move? And I sort of understand the sentiment behind that and I understand maybe people are trying to be helpful, but I don't like that mentality. Like if something is, there's a problem somewhere, then you just ignore it and go away or turn your back so you can't see it anymore. Uh, that's what caused, you know, the horrible urban decay in the 70s, the 60s and 70s in our inner cities is, and white flight. You hear about that sometimes. It's people just flee. And I can understand that, I guess. You don't wanna have to deal with a bad situation, but it created horrible situations in our inner cities. And obviously that's not, you know, a one-to-one -one sort of situation with what's going on here. But uh, I don't like the idea of like, I like, I like where I live. I like the neighborhood. Um, I like being where I am. There are some problems going on right now and hopefully they can be addressed and hopefully they can be fixed. I guess it's something that maybe if we do what we can and nothing improves years down the line, or, you know, wh wh wherever I am in my life, you never know what's going to happen, then maybe I'd think about moving. But my first response is not going to be just to move. Um, because then what happens when the new place starts becoming, when, when situations deteriorate there for whatever reason, you just move again, eventually you're just being chased all over the country. I think it's fine to stay here for now. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to mention, Grant from Lumos Leather. I reviewed uh, some Lumos Leather products last week 
and I mentioned in my review that the belt was too big, that I had measured from the buckle to the uh, hole that I use most, sent it into him, and then when I got it back, it was actually too large. And he actually responded and said, oh, sorry, I actually assumed that you were giving me your pant size and just added, I don't know, three inches or something to the pant size, and that's why it was too big. And I thought, okay, that's the end of that. But then just randomly in the mail, without expecting it, he sent me a new belt of the proper size, which I'm actually wearing right now. So I just wanted to point out that uh, that's a nice guy. That's someone who looks like he's really, want, really wants to take care of his customers. And if you saw that review and you were thinking of buying a belt from them, they are sized correctly. Just make sure he knows whether or not you're sending him your pant size or the measurement that they show on there, you know, the proper way to measure your belt size. And that was really nice of him to send that. He didn't have to do that. That was just really nice. So I think they are good people. Him and his wife, Lumos Leather, check them out. Um, I've been talking a mile a minute. I don't know how relaxing. Oh no, there are other things I had to get to. Okay, two more things. Future tobacco reviews. I have Cornell and Deal, Bayou Morning, ba-bam, oft-requested blend. And again, it can kind of go into that, perhaps looking for a replacement for Elizabethan. And then I was able to procure a tin of this, Dunbar by Esoterica. I have wanted to review this for a very long time. It has been impossible to get online. And someone helped me out very much, very generously sent me a tin for me to review. Thank you very much. And I will be doing this soon as well. So there you go. There are many, many things to check out, to look forward to on the Stuff and Things channel and the Stuff and Things Plays channel. The Zelda Breath of the Wild series is still ongoing. I think it's fantastic. Even if I weren't speaking in those videos, they'd still be entertaining because that game is so good. So check out Stuff and Things, Stuff and Things Plays. Thank you guys all so much for watching. It's because of you that I'm able to continue can keep doing, continue doing what I am doing. I can't continue talking though, because apparently I've been speaking too much and I'm starting to stumble over my words. But until next time, until we meet again, I'm going to be the honest business stuff of things on a pleasant Sunday smoke. Whew. I'll see you later. Oh boy. I got a lot of editing to do.